if the events of that day didn't take place, I wouldn't be the person that I am. It's the gift and the curse. A lot was taken away on that day, but a lot has been given to me at that intersection too. Tony Elliott's mom, Patricia, was a church-going woman whose life was often a portrait of hardship. She worked hard. She loved me and my little sister. She put up with a lot from my dad uh, for a while, and then I was proud of the fact that she was able to get herself out of that situation. Patricia had escaped an abusive first marriage and endured homelessness in Los Angeles with her two young children, Tony and Brandy. It was just us in a shopping cart, kind of, you know, working our way around. They were literally living on the streets, and that's when we actually had them come back with us to our ministry. It was a brand new start for them. Patricia eventually remarried, and on June 11th, 1989, she loaded her family into their Volkswagen van for the drive to church on Sycamore Street. I remember, you know, as we approached that intersection, my mom just yells out, and then bang, there's a crash. The car's tumbling, um, comes to rest upside down. My mom's laying on the ground, you know, halfway ejected out of the, uh, the, the passenger window. Um, there's blood everywhere. You know, she's lifeless. My stepdad yells, tell me to go get help. I try to run through the park, and, and I end up finding the people at the church. All of a sudden, I see Tony running like hysterical. All he kept saying was, my mom's in the street, my mom's in the street. Patricia died that morning at a local hospital. She was 35. Her nine-year-old son, Tony, was suddenly at a crossroads of his own. There were times where there was a lot of uncertainty, a lot of instability. I don't know how I did it. You know, I just somehow I got up every day and just tried to be the best that I could. With their biological dad in and out of prison, Tony and Brandy lived with relatives. Tony became a high school star in Charleston, South Carolina, and earned a football scholarship at Clemson. His wide receivers coach as a senior in 2003 was a newcomer named Dabo Sweeney. He wrote me a note after the season, and it was amazing. Basically just telling him that, you know, the reason that, that the players play so hard for him is because he loves them. He's a great leader of men uh, because he cares about the individual. The two remain close. And at a 2010 coaches convention in Los Angeles, Elliot, by then an assistant at Furman, asked the now Clemson head coach to take a car ride with him. Next thing you know, he stops the car. And he said, right there, that's where my mom died in my arms, right there. And, and it just kind of took my breath away. I looked up and the road was Sycamore. I just kind of filed that away and I was so moved that he wanted me to be there for that and see that. A year later, Sweeney invited Elliot and his wife, Tamika, to dinner at his home. He said, what do you think about being my running back coach? I was like, are you serious? <laughs> and I just kind of broke down at that, at that moment. I was able to tell him, Tony, you know where I live? Do you know what my address is? I live on Sycamore Drive. And I said, I wanted to hire you here. What was a terrible moment in your life on Sycamore is now one of the greatest moments on your life on Sycamore. Never did I think that at the age of nine, the last time I was seeing my mom on Sycamore Street, would I get an opportunity, you know, to fulfill a dream on Sycamore Street. Is that good? Good, good, good. There it is. I like it, I like it, I like it. Come on, Brad, come on, let's go. Elliot has done more than fulfill a dream. He surpassed it. He's now the co-offensive coordinator of the number one team in the country. Runs it up in the end zone. Touchdown, Clemson. The one, two, Clemson, the Tigers. But the intersection of gift and curse will never fade for Elliot. It is in his heart and in his memories. A lot of times we smile to keep from crying, but, uh, but I'm happy. You know, I'm happy. I'm at peace with it, man. I, re I really am. And, uh, and I know she's happy.
Brandy and Tony don't actually commemorate that June 11th date. It still hurts so much for them, but he has made good on a promise that he made to himself and to the memory of his mother. He said he was always going to take care of his younger sister, Brandy, and he has done that, Reese. In fact, guess who walked her down the aisle on her wedding day? Tony?